Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Soberlab and today I will explain how to install TrueNAS. In this video I'll go for the basic information how to install this operating system, as well how to set your pool, your user, your dataset and some basic information that you need to have. Why I'm showing this video? Because in the last video or previous videos I show how to install OpenMedia Vault 6. It's a good option for NAS system, but it's important to know different systems. As you're gonna see in this channel, I like to show different options for you and that you need to decide which one that fit better for your needs and which one that you like to use. So as I was telling, I will show how to install through NAS. If you like this idea and want to know a little bit more, we're gonna show it. Leave your like straight away before I forget, subscribe for the channel and leave your comments for suggestions for new videos. And so let's see how to do it. So first thing that we're gonna do is open the TrueNAS website and I'm gonna explain a little bit about TrueNAS and FreeNAS. In the website, they say about the TrueNAS and FreeNAS, operating system that was for a long time in use, but now they don't exist anymore, they are not updated anymore. Now the only operating system that you're gonna use is the TrueNAS. And TrueNAS have a series of different options. You can have TrueNAS Core, TrueNAS Enterprise, TrueNAS Business, and continue on. So if we look for this website, we can see how it looks like the system. It's quite an uh, interface, it's quite easy. We go a little bit down and they explain a little bit what is TrueNAS, how it works, and if I should build it or buy one. Done. Depending on how reliable you need, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about it. As I was telling, you have the TrueNAS, TrueNAS Enterprise, and TrueNAS Scale. TrueNAS Core is basically the standard edition that you can use in your computer and will not require so much hardware. And uh, it's good for small business and for your home lab. If you go for Enterprise, it's a little bit more scalable that you can install VMware, Citrix, and others. And if you go for a true nice scale, it means that you're gonna have a lots of um, computers working together. It's not only one. You can interact to two, three, four computers to make a cluster and that you can work with the, all those together to, to combine and have more power to do all the activity that you need. So that is it. Let's go back here. And TrueNAS have uh, some, oh, some system that they sell. That is not what we're gonna do. We're gonna build our own system. In the future videos, I will have some ideas how to build your hardware and what you need to do physically. Not only what's the idea, but uh, some, some ideas that I have in my house and I will show what I did. Maybe you can look something similar, but you don't need to follow it. It's only some ideas. As well, we're gonna go for the software. Here they explain a little bit more about this system. If we go there, it's forever open. It's open source. You don't pay anything for the TrueNAS. It's a good thing. If we go a little bit down, they say that it's free open source, unified storage, build with a ZFS. Okay, what's ZFS? It's a file system. ZFS is one of advanced that they can have really high capacity. You can have uh, petabytes of raw data that you can use there. Uh, different for X24 that you can have mass, I think that is 12 terabytes or 16 terabytes. As well, have a lots of people in the community that help. If you go for community area, you have a lots of different repository that you can use as well, a lots of people talking about this application. If you have some problems, you can go in the community. Perhaps you're gonna find your solution there. As well, this option have a lots of uh, VMware that you can install. You can have uh, some kind of uh, rate. You can have rates as well. You can have encryption for the data. Here they explain a little bit how we work the TrueNAS. The TrueNAS have the management system that will be the web UI and the VPN securities where you can have all the data secret for you. In this one, you can have the storage where they will work with ZFS and for the ZFS, you can have a Samba SMB, you can have some blocks or you can have some snapshots or make some backups for it. As well, as I stand, they have some plugins that you can install in this one and you can have some virtualization as you can install Windows, Linux and other operating system inside this uh, system. So it's some difference that you can do. They work with a free OBS so it will not work a Docker as a native running, but you can install a VM and you can install Docker. I will show it in other videos, but only for having an idea about it. 
So before we go to install, I will go for the minimum requirement for this hardware and that you can uh, look if it will fit your needs or not, if it will fit in your system or not. If you go for minimum requirement, they say that you need to have a 64-bit processor. If you're using only a 32 or really old uh, processor, it will not work. You need to have at least one storage of 8 GB where they will install the operating system. You can install in USB, but they don't recommend it. They say that it's better to use straight away a hard drive for security reasons because USB can fail anytime and a hard drive, it's a little bit more stable. But it's your decision, I only recommend it. As well, what uh, eight gigabytes of run memory, and you are gonna have addition one gigabyte of run for each drive that you have. If you have eight drives, you need to have eight gigabytes more. It means that total of 16 gigabytes of run. You don't need necessarily to follow it, but it's a suggestion to run it more smoothly. You need to have a controller for connect all this SAT or SAS, you, if your computer already have a four SATA connection, you don't need a controller. You need to connect more than four, so you need a controller or a SATA extension, but we're gonna go through it in another video. As well, you need to have a network connection. Or otherwise, what's the idea to have a NAS server if you don't have a network connection? Have this one in mind, we're gonna be back in the TrueNAS Core webpage and go to download. You can connect this one as a Google, GitHub or Facebook, but you can go and no thank I already have a sign out and you can come here to download. I'm going to install this uh, system in a virtual machine. This one because uh, I don't have a capture card and I cannot record how they are installing it. So to avoid it, I already install in a virtual machine, it's easy. The operating system, as I told, I'm using as a free BSD. I, I dedicate 10 gigabytes of run memory from this operating system. I leave uh, four processors for v, v cores because I want to, to simulate the next installation that you're gonna do. That uh, I have a dedicated computer with i5 with four cores, so I want to simulate it. As well, I leave one hard drive that I will install the operating system and more four hard drives. These three hard drives will be considered as a hard drive and one of those will be considered as, as a SSD because I want to build a cache for it, for get fast access for reading. I leave my TrueNAS as an optical drive, a CD drive, and uh, I leave my network as a bridge. Then I will simulate that it's physically connect to the network from my house. Have all this one in mind, I can go and put start. After putting start, First page that will open will be put NAS installation. I will press enter and then I will gonna start to install the system. So first thing we're gonna go to install. Desk which hard drive that I want. As I told, I want to install the hard drive of 30 gigabytes. If you have more than one hard drive, try to locate which one that you're gonna install correctly. Otherwise they will install wrong, but it's basic information. They, they recommend that you install in a SAT or SAS or MFME flash drive. If you want to install a, in a flash drive, you can install, but it's not so safe, then you can lose the same thing that I told before. They ask you to define the root password. I will put here, test one, two, three. That is not it. And now they suggest you to install either for boot UEFI or BIOS. If your computer is a little bit old, I suggest you to install as a BIOS. If it's more new, you can install as a UFI. Because I'm going to install in the other computer that's quite old, so I'll install as a BIOS. We're going to wait now to start the installation. Okay, after finishing to do all the installation, they will show this page that installation is successful. So we're going to go enter and I put to shut down my system because I want to remove my flash drive or my CD drive with the true NAS. Wonderful, now you can go in settings, come here in storage and I remove this uh, true NAS CD. I go okay and I can start my virtual machine again. Basically, I press the start again and wait to start. So first time that they will start, they will show this page. We're gonna go to boot the true NAS and they will start to install the basically information. They will review all your data, if everything is there. They will look for all your hardware for your computer and ge will generate the key. So it will take a little bit longer than normal start. So let's wait. Okay, if now appear this page, means that your installation was correct, everything's all right. 
Now it's the time that you can get the computer with all the prefects that you install, remove everything, put in a corner of your house, connect the internet, and now you don't need to use this computer anymore. You're gonna work only remotely with the web page. So we're gonna do the same. We're gonna open this IP address that they suggest, 192.168.1.78, and we're gonna start the basic configuration. Okay, I already opened this IP address, and I'm gonna log in with root, put the same password that we configured during the installation, and wonderful. Now we are with operating system that don't work anything yet because not configured, but it's work at least. Here they have a quick overview. I have uh, five threads from this computer dedicated. I have 10 gigabyte of run. I have my network connection for a uh, one gigabyte connection. And my IP address is this one. As well, the operating system is too nice to off. So now we can start to do the basic configuration. First thing, we're gonna configure our storage. We're gonna come here in storage. We're gonna go to pool and I put add pool. Here in add pool, I can come here and import a pool, but in my case, I don't have anything installed, so I need to create a new one. I come here and create a pool. I define the name. In my case, I will put as a home. I can encrypt this data. If I come here to encrypt, they will generate a key for me for this encryption. If I lose this key, basically I lose all my data. It's really difficult to recover it. It means that if you really don't need, it's better to avoid it. But if you want to keep this data really safe, you can uh, create this encryption key. In our case, we don't do it. We're gonna cancel it. And now they say, suggest layout. We can click it and see what we're gonna do. Wonderful. All my hard drives, they read located in one of the array. And here they say that RAID C. What means is the same as RAID 5. We'll have one hard drive for pirate and the others ones will be data. It means that if I lose one of those hard drives, I still keep my data and don't lose anything. As I told, we're gonna create this SSD as a cache. So I'm gonna hit add and I add as a cache. I could add other options as a log, hot spare, but in my case, I wanted to create as a cache. Here in cache, I select this hard drive and put cop here. It means that these three hard drives will be my RAID and this SSD will be my cache to have a fast access. I come here and create it. They ask, you are sure? Yes, I'm sure and create. It'll take some seconds until they connect all these RAID. Depend how big it's your RAID will take longer or shorter, but in my case, it's only eight gigabytes, so it's really fast. And done. My, my pool is great. Now I need to create a data set for this pool. I come here and create a add data set and put as a dot. What's this data set? This data set is exactly the same idea for the share folder in the open VPN. Initially you mount your hard drive and that's you need to create your share folders. This one is the share folder data. So it's done here. I'm not modifying any information leave as a standard. If you need, you can have a look what is interesting for you, but for this video, not to modify anything. So we can go and submit. Here we submitted this data and now we can uh, create our user. We come here in our user account and put as a user. In the user, they have read my root. They say that the root is hide here as a deploy user. It's okay, no problem. And I go to add. Here I will create my user. As I create my operating system as a BIOS, there will have limitation of uh, letters for my user. So I leave as a sauber, that's fine. I create my email address. I can add my email address. In this video, not do it, but uh, I suggest you to do it for recover propose. Now I define my password. So here we're gonna leave exactly the same information. We're not modify so many things because uh, we'll take too long to explain each one. And this video will take hours and hours and try to avoid it. So now we can define our director from this user. I come here and put as a data. And they say user access read and execute, it's fine. And I put Microsoft account. And I will permit sudo because I want to do some extra installation for this one. If I want to create my SSH public key, I can come here and create this key. And after download, this one will be used to access through the putty, but to not create it at this stage. So I come here and click submit. Wonderful, we just create our user. So now we want to share this folder to the network. In this way, I come here sharing. I come SNB, Windows 
Windows Share, and I come here and add. Now we're gonna share this folder. I come here in data, then I leave as a default parameter and I put submit. The first time that you submit, they say that this service is not on, so we need to enable the service. We come here, enable service, and done, it's enabled. So I can close it, and they will ask, you want to configure it the ACL? Yes, I want to configure it. This one, it's the time that you configure it, your permissions for access to the folders. I come here and put configure it now. Yes, ACL, I will select as restrict, because if I select as open, everyone has access. If you select as a home, everyone that's in your network will have access and that restrict is only the person that have the user. If this way, I put as a continue. Here's the data. I can select the user that I can use. In my case, I will select the user Sauber because I want that he has access for this one and apply for this user. I put as a user. And now I can define what information here. I will leave exactly as a standard. You can go through and configure it, but in this case, we'll not do it. And I come here and put save. Now I configure my permission. If you want to edit it after, I always can come here in these three dots and put edit permission. And I have this page again. Fine, until now I create my pool and I create my user. Now I need to configure my tasks. If I come here in task, and click in smart. Here in smart, they will make a track for a hard drive. This is really important for you to activate because if one of your hard drives starts to fail or start to have any problem, they will detect here and let you know that the hard drive soon will fail. If this is important for you don't lose your data. So let's do it. You put add, select all the hard drives. You can select the tape of scan. It can be a long, short and offline. So we're gonna go as a short one and we want to scan daily at uh, midnight. You can decide other time, once a week, once a month, or some cosmic time. So every day it's fine for me. I put submit. Next thing that I need to do, I come in user, user, and in the root, I will edit it and add my email address. Why I want to add my email address in this user? Because if any problem that appear, do not find the email for the root. So it's important to put your email address for the root. Now, the next step, we're gonna configure our plugins. If I come here in plugins, they will ask for you to choose the folder. I choose the folder home and choose. Now, all the plugins will be installed in this folder. If I come here, I can install Nextcloud, I can install Plex and others application. This one's already through NAS approved programs. If you come here in community, you can install others program for the community. It's a proof as well, but it's not uh, developed specific for the TrueNAS. It's uh, adapted for a TrueNAS. So as well, if you want to make some virtual machine, you can come here in virtual machine and add a new virtual machine. But this one, we're gonna go for another video. Here in report, you can have a usage of your CPU. You can have a report for your disk, your network, your partition, your task, your ZNF, and continue on. As well, if you come to display system, you can see what's using for your system, basically the task manager for your TrueNAS. If you come here in shell, you can make some basic commands. So in services, you can activate it. You can activate dynamic DNS, you can activate FTP, you can activate uh, rsync, smart. Of course, if you go to activate FTP, you need to configure the FTP, otherwise you're not uh, have access properly and continue on. Okay, this video I go to the basic for the TrueNAS. In the next videos, I will explain a little bit more the plugins that you can install or how to install it and how to external direct. As well, I will show how to create some virtual machines, how to install Docker for your applications and everything that you're gonna need. Step by step, because you can have a lot of functionality for this operating system. So you need to go step by step. Otherwise, the videos will be two, three hours and it will be boring, okay? If you like this video, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel, and see you next video. Bye.